sorry for moving you there, guys. Gotta remember where that uh, camera is sometimes. So uh, amazingly, this camera is still still alive. Uh, so anyway, it is. What is it? It is Tuesday. April 14th, 2020, and this is Sam Mitchell and my little co-pilot, uh, Sancho Panza. So, we just finished our Collapse Chronicles, where I shared the very beginning and the very end of this long, excellent essay by a uh, psychology professor named Sheldon Solomon. Uh, and so now we're going to go come over to a very interesting Corona Panic Chronicle, which I don't think uh, has the word Corona anywhere in it. I'm not even sure. I, I don't have a date on this essay, so I think it might even predate the Corona the Corona Panic, but. Despite all that, it is the single most spot-on explanation for why the corona panic has just become such a divisive issue. Uh, you know, I have been talking about how this entire planet has become a, uh, a, a planet of panicked sheeple. That it, for whatever reason, uh, it's like eight billion people have suddenly uh, understood for the first time that they are not immortal, that they are going to die at some point, and something is going to kill them. And I, I've never really thought that much about death anxiety because I do not suffer from death anxiety. So I'm absolutely, I think this is at the root of why I am so flabbergasted how this whole thing has completely spun, uh, spun out of control since I do not suffer from death anxiety. It's like I, I, I never have that it just flabbergasts me and, I, and I'm trying to understand why the people such as myself who do not suffer from death anxiety, who are not in this full-scale freakout that we might catch coronavirus or, or that we might even die from it, that it, that it, it is nowhere on my register of things I think about. And so I'm trying to figure out why people like me j just have unleashed this absolute torrent of, of vitriol, hatred, why I have had, why I have lost so many subscribers, where I have had people yank their Patreon support of me, where I have been trolled and, uh, and just absolutely vilified uh, for, for asking the question, uh, is the economic shutdown of this globe uh, a, an overreaction to the fact that some people are going to get sick and die of the coronavirus? Uh, it's, I, I have never in my life, with the possible exception of climate change deniers, uh, you know, that people like me uh, are just being lumped in with, uh, we're being shamed, uh, we're being ridiculed, uh, and, and, and I'm just trying to get to the heart of it, and Alert Tribes member Tyler has found this uh, fellow, uh, Sheldon Solomon, who I'm thrilled to say uh, I'm going to be interviewing here. And so Sheldon has this long uh, 
essay, which I'm gonna put the link on here, and you need to read the whole thing called Death Denial in the Anthropocene. Death Denial in the Anthropocene. And we're going to uh, just go to the middle of this essay where Sheldon Solomon uh, explains to me better than anyone ever has the corona panic. Why uh, this, what I consider a bad hair day relative to what's coming down the pike has turned eight billion people in, 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 into a drooling mass of, uh, of, uh, of just panicked sheeple willing to shut down the global industrial economy, ruin the lives of millions, if not billions of people, uh, and hand over and cheer on the uh, Orwellian police state. Uh, so Sheldon Solomon is going to try to explain this to me. And if you are someone being accused of being a COVID idiot because you don't line up between the behind the fear-mongering media and cheer on the Orwellian police state lockdown, maybe this will help explain it to you what we're up against. What we're up against is death denial. And so we're going to go down to the section in the middle of this essay titled Destroying the World to Save It, which he starts out with a quote from uh, the novel The Fire Next Time, written in 1962 by novelist James Baldwin, The Fire Next Time. <laughs> Take it away, James. Perhaps the whole root of our trouble, the human trouble, is that we will sacrifice all, we will sacrifice all the beauty of our lives. We will imprison ourselves in totems, taboos, crosses, blood sacrifices, steeples, mosques, races, armies, flags, and nations in order to deny the fact of death, that it all gets back to death denial is behind the corona panic. Finally, I have gotten to the root of the corona panic. It is death denial. <clears throat> So take it away, Sheldon uh, Solomon. To the extent that cultural worldviews mitigate death anxiety, humans are prone to react with hostility and disdain to others who do not subscribe to their beliefs for two reasons. This is the reason that anybody questioning the, uh, the, the dominant paradigm on this planet is despised by uh, humans suffering from death anxiety, which is 99% of the population apparently. Okay, two reasons. First, the mere existence of people who harbor different beliefs is problematic to the extent that acknowledging the validity of alternative cultural worldviews undermines confidence in the veracity of one's own beliefs. If, for example, the Fulani in Africa are correct in their view that the earth originated from a giant drop of milk, then the Judeo-Christian view that God created the earth and all of its inhabitants in six days, sans dairy products, is implicitly or explicitly challenged. This in turn elicits the existential anxieties 
that cultural worldviews generally serve to buffer. Second, although cultural worldviews serve as potent bulwarks against death anxiety, they are nonetheless ultimately symbolic efforts to manage anxiety engendered by death, a profoundly physical event. It is therefore impossible for cultural worldviews, religious or secular, to eliminate death anxiety. Residual death anxiety is in turn repressed and projected onto groups or individuals inside or outside of the culture designated as all-encompassing repositories of evil, i.e. scapegoats, who are subsequently denigrated and dehumanized and trolled on YouTube, coerced into relinquishing their cherished beliefs and adopting those of the dominant group or be physically annihilated. Consequently and ironically, Becker in 1975 concluded that most of the evil in the world results from self-righteous efforts to rid the world of evil, such as those evil coronavirus deniers. A substantial body of research confirms that arousing existential anxieties, meaning going up against the panicked herd of sheeple, stokes prejudice and intolerance. For example, in response to mortality salience, Christians had more favorable reactions to fellow Christians and less favorable actions to Jews. Germans sat closer to a fellow German and farther away from someone who appeared to be a Turkish immigrant. Americans were more physically aggressive to others who did not share their political views. Iranians were more supportive of suicide bombers and more willing to become suicide bombers themselves and conservative Americans were more supportive of the preemptive use of nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons of mass destruction against countries who pose no threat to the U.S. George Bernard Shaw was literally correct in his observation that, quote, when the angel of death sounds his trumpet, the pretenses of civilization are blown from men's heads into the mud like hats in a gust of wind. And I don't think it was clear what he's talking about here. There is an excellent, excellent uh, hour and a half YouTube uh, where, uh, where Solomon uh, it, it expands on all of this research that he just uh, coalesced into one paragraph. He spends about 10 or 15 minutes fleshing this out. And what he means by a substantial body of research confirming that arousing existential anxiety stokes prejudice and intolerance he uh, goes through all of these experiments where what they did, they, they got two groups of people, a control group of people that did not have their death anxiety aroused, such as uh, the entire planet is being kept in a 24-hour state of non-stop death anxiety arousal by the fear stream media. Uh, and the people who were not exposed to something like that uh, before answering this set of questions or, or whatever, 
Uh, we're a lot more tolerant of others with different views and whatnot. But if you aroused people's death anxiety by whatever uh, way, that group of people facing the same choices as people who were not reminded uh, that they were mortal and might die someday were much more intolerant of others uh, and willing, I guess, to, uh, to cheer on the police state. Uh, anything to uh, invalidate the opinions of those few people on the planet who do not suffer from death anxiety. Anyway, let's move to the next, uh, the next section titled Fatal Attraction. This is uh, a quote from Don DeLillo in White Noise. Helpless and fearful people are drawn to magical figures, mythical figures, epic men who intimidate and darkly loom, which I would say is another way of saying the quote, police state, uh, which certainly uh, this nebulous police state, uh, how they are willing to hand over their most fundamental, uh, most basic civil, civil and constitutional rights when they, their death anxiety is aroused. They, they are so flipped out that they don't, they, they, they just can't think rationally anymore uh, and will choose bringing down the, uh, the global industrial co economy and destroying the lives of millions, if not billions of people, including their own lives, uh, to, to, to somehow minimize any chance that they are going to uh, get sick uh, or die of coronavirus. Anyway, back to uh, Sheldon. <clears throat> Sociologist Max Weber proposed that followers to followers attachment to and enthusiasm for seemingly larger than life leaders intensifies in times of historic upheaval. Similarly, Eric Hoffer, reflecting on the rise of charismatic leaders in the 20th century, including Hitler, Stalin, and Mussolini, argued that the primary impetus for all populist movements is a critical mass of frustrated and disaffected citizens Sub subject to grave economic or psychological insecurity, quote, in desperate need of something to live for. This results in unwavering dedication and loyalty to leaders who confidently espouse a cause that infuses their life of a sense lies with a sense of worth and meaning and faith in the future via identification, the process by which the individual ceases to be himself and becomes part of something eternal, uh, where we just, when the herd mentality uh, kicks in, just, it's just a natural part of human nature to surrender more and more of our individual rights uh, and freedoms uh, to join the, the chorus of the herd. This is exactly what is playing out on this planet today and you can take whatever you see unfolding in the corona panic today and extrapolate uh, in, in, into the very near future what it's going to look like on this planet when more and more corona panics 
and things a whole hell of a lot worse than the corona panic uh, start manifesting themselves. We are going, as a planet, we are going to enter into a state of non-stop fear and panic. And we are going to gladly hand over our rights and our freedoms to anybody uh, who we think uh, is, is out there to protect uh, our best interest uh, and keep us alive for another day. And you better believe the Orwellian police state is taking 100% uh, advantage of this. Uh, and, and here is all of this research to bear it out. <clears throat> Hoffer observed that charismatic leaders are rarely exceptionally intelligent, noble, or original. Rather, the primary qualification, quote, seems to be audacity and a joy in defiance, an iron will, a fanatical conviction that he is in possession of the one and only truth, faith in his destiny and luck, a capacity for passionate hatred, contempt for the present, a cunning estimate of human nature, a delight in symbols such as spectacles and ceremonials, the arrogant gesture, the complete disregard of the opinion of others, the single-handed defiance of the world, and some deliberate misinterpretation of facts. And I think we're clearly uh, understanding the psychology of the Trump voter. And, and, and this is what's weird, guys, is this corona panic has actually, it's, it, 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 it's basically, it, it, we have this weird uh, cognitive dissonance going on that people on one hand uh, even the people who despise Donald Trump can still be panic sheeple. It, it's like, it, it's like I, I, I see plenty of people who, who despise Donald Trump uh, at the same time despising anybody who, uh, who, who goes up against the dominant fear-based paradigm. And uh, it, it's just strange times on the planet. Uh, finally, Hoffer noted that mass movements require an external enemy to enable the charismatic leader to transform the, transform the fear of their frustrated and disaffected followers into unrelenting rage directed towards tangible scapegoats. So what the only thing that I have not seen, well, we haven't seen it arise yet, but I guess this Fauci guy, uh, with Dr. Fauci, be uh, the only one there. There is no political leader that I have seen yet, although you better believe there's plenty in the making who are trying, you know, trying to turn the corona panic into a single individual charismatic leader's uh, rise to power. It will not surprise me one bit that uh, we will see a person like this uh, rise. And if, and if Donald Trump was not just so, such a despicable buffoon, he could even be that person. But you better believe somewhere uh, in, the, uh, in the Orwellian police state lurks a new Adolf Hitler fully ready to uh, appear to uh, claim that only he uh, can protect us from the bogeyman 
uh, be it coronavirus or some other real bogeyman coming down the pike. President George W. Bush's popularity skyrocketed when he declared that he believed God had chosen him to rid the world of evildoers such as Corona Panic in the aftermath of the September 11th terrorist attack on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. In studies conducted prior to the 2004 presidential election, Landau et al. found that whereas American control participants rated Senator John Kerry more favorable than President Bush, President Bush was rated more favorably than Senator Kerry in response to mortality salience. <clears throat> Additionally, uh, Cohen, Ogilvy, Solomon, Greenberg, and Sosinski found that while registered voters in a control group intended to vote for Kerry by a four to one margin, other registered voters randomly assigned to think about their mortality subsequently reported intending to vote for President Bush by more than a two to one margin. Similarly, Donald Trump was elected president in 2016 by claiming that the United States was under siege by terrorists Muslims and immigrants, and that only he could keep U.S. citizens safe by making America great again. Cohen, Solomon, and Kaplan found that while American participants in a control group rated Hillary Clinton more positively than Donald Trump, Trump's ratings increased significantly in response to a death reminder. Anyway, guys, uh, fascinating research, and you really should go listen to. I will try to post the link. I'm going to put the link to this whole article and uh, the link to that other YouTube video if I can find it again. So anyway, guys, I want to thank uh, Sheldon Solomon for finally explaining it to someone who does not suffer from death anxiety, why I have become such a pariah down here in the Doomosphere as my own fellow Doomers uh, line up to, uh, I, I'm sure so, it, if you agree with what Sheldon Solomon has to say about the uh, herd mentality of panic sheeple, please thumb up this video. If you disagree with this, uh, with his lifetime of research, you know, thumb it down and please explain why. And saying Sheldon Solomon is a clueless moron and so is Sam Mitchell or anyone else listening to one word instead of just an ad hominem attack on anybody that does not share the death anxiety. Uh, would you please give us an intelligent comment why you do not agree with this? But of course, you, you, you know, uh, panicked people suffering death anxiety are never going to admit that they that their anxiety over their own death uh, is a problem. But I do understand uh, the Corona panic better than anybody has ever explained it, and uh, I do understand why. From here on out, we are going to be in an, an Orwellian police state. From this point forward, there is no turning back now because we are going to be a, a planet of panicked sheeple. And uh, no.
nobody uh, understands that better than the Orwellian police state uh, that has something to gain by keeping us in a constant state of fear. So go ahead and play into their game, play right, just be played like a fish by uh, the Orwellian police state and, and, and tell me what an evil scumbag I am for refusing to wear a mask. Yeah, still not. Do you have a mask? How concerned are you about the coronavirus? So, tell the people how concerned you are about the corona panic. How about the squirrely panic? <laughs>